Welcome all. It's my pleasure today to be joined by Vahe Bedrosyan, Professor of Physics and Applied Physics at Stanford University. Uh, he's done incredible work uh, in, in the physics world to do with black holes, gravitational lensing, and much, much more. So, Professor Bedrosyan, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for your time. Oh, thank you. I'm happy to be here. So you, like me, were at the Armenian Society of Fellows Conference in Dilijan, which has this mission aim to take research, higher education in Armenia to the next level. Um, there was a whole swathe of professionals and academics from different spheres. Um, now that the conference has finished, what were your takeaways from it? What did you think? What were your observations? My main uh, takeaway was I didn't go to the first meeting of uh, ASOF. This is my first one. In Venice? In Venice. I did, I did, did one day, uh, a few hours by Zoom. But uh, and my contacts were primarily physicists. Mm. Ani Abraham, who is the president, and Vacher, the secretary, his physicist. So, and I knew Annie when I was a graduate student. Uh, so I sort of had the impression this is going to be much more science oriented. Mm. So my first surprise was that it was so broad mm. and it was very impressive. Uh, social sciences, economics, arts, linguistics. Cinema. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was just wonderful to have mm. all those. And uh, uh, I was very positively impressed, uh, I would say. And was there, I know there were some sort of task forces or cause set up uh, between various groups. Um, were you assigned any particular task force with perhaps the other physicists? Yes, I'm in the physics group, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm one of the, what they call advisors. Mm -hmm. I guess a few of us older guys are <laughs> in the advisor role, but the main committee in charge is the, uh, uh, the five younger people. Okay, you started your, your journey, uh, your academic journey in 1958 at Cornell. That's correct. It's a very yeah. prestigious university, of course. Um, at that time, I'd say that there was a lot of inspiration for youngsters wanting to go into physics and, and, and astrophysics. The uh, Apollo missions, all these things were really uh, invigorating. Uh, uh, youngsters. I also find interesting in Armenia, a lot of times when you see murals, old Soviet murals, a lot of times they will depict cosmonauts and planets. Um, some would say that that was a bygone age and that there needs to be a new reinvigoration for young people to, to be interested in the sciences and physics, but you obviously have studied uh, things which present that now is a very exciting time for, for physics and applied physics and astrophysics. Um, the uh, black hole uh, images were just released to the public. Black hole stars that have been studied. Gravitational lensing, which I believe was also how Einstein proved uh, some of his, his, his theories. Um, how would you say uh, this challenge of invigorating young Armenian students in Armenia with regards to physics and science. Was this discussed with, by yourself and your colleagues? I mean, how do you see the state of that uh, invigoration and education in, in Armenia? Uh, right now? Right now. Well, I mean, I guess there was a lot of discussion there uh, with every aspect. Uh, the needs are great. and. Uh, but the potential seems to be there in some areas to for growth and uh, and essentially we are in a chase trying to catch up with the rest of the world sort of more advanced scientifically in many ways so in that respect i think uh, introducing the students to all the great discoveries and our excitement in i can talk about science because that's where where i work but I'm sure in other fields too, there are a lot of exciting new things happening. Uh, things are changing. So introducing to the younger generation all these possibilities, providing them motivation to dive in and start learning and start creating things, that's, uh, that's uh, is possible. 
I mean, even something like gravitational lensing, which you have studied in depth, I'm sure any room that sits and listens to that would yeah. be fascinated about their own lives, about the universe. I mean, what exactly does that pertain to in layman's terms? Well, gravitational lensing, uh, I'm one of the co-discoverers of it in 1980s, we discovered it. It's uh, like all astronomical discoveries was a bit of an accidental thing. We were doing something else. So I had some other ideas to use big telescopes, and here they came, these arcs, and which were predicted by Einstein. Uh, this was very exciting then, and it has really proven to be fantastic. There were thousands of people working uh, at this in the United States on this area, gravitational lensing. So it's uh, it provided a lot of interest. One discovery provided a lot of motivation for a lot of younger people to go into the field. And now we have telescopes dedicated to it, and and so on, and. Uh, all sorts of new ways they needed to use gravitational lensing, which is very exciting. I thought also they. I read that Einstein would prove his 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 theories, or his theories were proved as a result of of of, of evidence of gravitational lensing. Yes, he was not the first one, but he got the biggest name. Somebody else did the real calculation just before Einstein, but somebody else uh, asked Einstein to. What about this? And so he did calculate that he discovered what sort of uh, images gravitational lensing would provide. Uh, it's just like a regular lens which magnifies and changes images. Gravitation force also does the same thing. And the main thing is that you can produce something called Einstein ring in some rare cases. But if it's in other cases, you see part of the Einstein ring. And uh, that didn't really prove uh, Einstein's theory. I mean, there were three other <coughs> more important experiments which proved Einstein's theory was right. But it was a prediction that didn't really come observed till much later. Einstein was concerned lensing of star by star. Right, okay. And as a result, he found out that it's very rare phenomena. And uh, so people forgot about it. Till 1960s, some people start talking about gravitational lensing. Is it that when the star's position uh, changes due to the due to light being bent? Bent by the light, yeah. It's mm -hmm. Just if one star goes beyond the other star as it moves in, its image changes from points to stars and like wow. point source of light to some sort of arc, and it goes directly behind it. It produces a nice ring, ring. and there are very few complete rings observed, but uh, uh, a lot of them are uh, half rings or I don't know. So anyway, the, the people later tried to do that thing that Einstein had said is impossible to do, uh, that it's very rare phenomena. So, uh, and uh, they did discover that there is a, a lensing happening of star where there's star, stars in the nearby small galaxy. Mm going through our galaxy, it's bent and produces lensing. Mm. And then we discovered the uh, possibility of a galaxy being lensed by a, a group of galaxies or another galaxy. Galaxy, galaxy lensing or galaxy by ah. group of galaxy lensing, which was uh, also predicted by another astronomer. And our discovery came in 1980s. Uh, uh, the, large arcs. We didn't see the ring, but we saw half of the ring looking very circular and amazingly beautiful. Well, Professor Petrosian, I also find it kind of amazing that in the science sector, in the science world, we find so many Armenians who are involved in, in, in different areas, uh, um, not just of study, but of missions or, or, or in NASA. Orion, I believe, also had an Armenian engineer. Um, can you speak a bit to that, the Armenian presence and the Armenian contribution to these scientific discoveries? Well, there's been a lot of contribution, but as for the people, I know I'm familiar with people in the United States, uh, mainly in person, but the others by their publications. Um, when I first started, uh, my, after my PhD, mm -hmm. uh, 
The first time I went to what we call International Astronomical Union, uh, all astronomers from the world get together once uh, every three years. Uh, a lot, there were lots of astronomers came from Armenia, Omar Sumian and others, mm -hmm. and I was one or two or three of the non-Armenian astronomers in that meeting. So there were very few of us. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it was a, a very exciting to meet all the people from Armenia, and then I traveled here and went to Burakan and got to know Omar Sumian and others. But now it's grown a lot. I mean, I was one of the very few Armenians in astronomy uh, with our uh, publication with IAN outside Armenia. There were lots of Armenians in the Burakan publishing, but now we have uh, many, I mean, uh, more than several dozen all in the leadership positions, so it's very exciting. The Burakan is a state-of-the-art observatory located uh, not far from Yerevan, which is now not in the best state. I mean, can you describe yeah, what it was I back just came back from Burakan. Mm. I was there to giving a seminar. I always, every time I visit Armenia, I go there to visit old friends and give seminars. Um, it's the, a uh, state of scientific uh, level has really dropped down a lot. And there's very little uh, scientific research is being done using the telescopes. Mm. They were telling me finally the big telescope, two and a half meters, they think it's in a way to start with observing somebody had done some new observation. But uh, that uh, no real new research has come out from uh, from there. So the question, research. but a lot of the astronomers are involved theoretically, and they, uh, like everybody else in the world, you don't have to be have the telescope to observe. Right. A lot of telescope in the world observe, but, and you go, and data is available that you can use yeah. it. And the they, times have changed in this, that you don't yeah. need to be on the ground. So it's a different uh, yeah. way of doing research. Not only in the astronomy, but in other areas too. There's a lot of big groups doing big things and then sharing things with the rest of the world. Yeah. And finally, a Professor, it was interesting to me that a lot of the p fellows in Dilijan spoke about how there is a lot of talent amongst young Armenians right now, but they lack um, the technologies they need for research, you know, research um, uh, institutions, labs, etc. Um, I'm wondering, if there was one policy, one real change you would like to see uh, in the educational sector, or not just the educational sector, to invigorate uh, the, uh, the science, uh, sciences in Armenia, what, what would it be? I think uh, we can motivate younger people with the excitement of the field. And, uh, but if they don't see a future possibility of uh, employment or career in that area, they will shy away. They may try a little bit and then change the field, go someplace else. So I think uh, that's probably one thing that keeps the young talents away from some of the basic uh, research, in, which is, I think, essential. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to have a big core of people doing fundamental research. It doesn't have to be all applied. Eventually, when you train students in, in the, by attracting them because of excitement of a fundamental research, then they become a, a problem solvers. And then they can do many, many things. Uh, I can give you an example. I have a probably 25, 26 graduate student. Only three, four of them end up to be professors. Several others end up to be research institutions. Sure. But the others are doing something else. <laughs> completely, some of them completely different. But three, four of them went in finances because they learned some things that financial institutions were excited about it and that they went and worked in there. And of course, big number went into software development, which mm -hmm. is sort of gobbling everything. <laughs> 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 which is not bad. I mean, which is right, good. right, right. We but it's an interesting dynamic, that. sure. And this artificial intelligence and uh, Machine learning is uh, just uh, just exploding, and it's going to be uh, some of the future, really, for all research. 
Okay, well, yeah. Professor... Much beyond my time, but <laughs> younger <laughs> generation, they will do fantastic degree that. <laughs> okay, well, Professor Petrosian, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for your time. Oh, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah. And thank you for joining us on CivilNet.